That word in the Greek is dunamis, which means miracle working power. We can see the power of God working in our lives, but that power of God is not determined or does not necessitate that we're going to heaven. God can use us at one point in time, but it's not based on how we are when he uses us. It's based on how we are when he comes to judge. And he's coming soon. As Christ says, we must be ready. Christ goes out to say, he will say in that day to those who profess him and confess him, but do not obey him, depart from me. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. You see, it's not about how we were with Christ when we got saved. It's not about how we were with Christ when we repented, were baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. It's about where we are today with Christ. In Revelation 2, the Lord appeared to seven pastors. Five of them he told to repent. That's 71% of all the churches in Asia. And in the first one, he said, You are bored, you've had patience, you've labored, you've done many things. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Be just therefore, he says, and repent. And Christ is calling out today Repent if you left your first love. Because they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We're looking at Galatians today. We went through 1 Corinthians 6 last week. Because this is very important. There are many things that are listed here that in today's world and so called church are oftentimes not preached about. We live in an age where everyone wants to hear about how they're blessed. But God's word says in Deuteronomy 28, blessings come by obedience. Curses come for disobedience. He would don't want to hear about the curses today. On the day of judgment, Christ is still going to deal with all the curses and the blessing based on one's obedience to him or disobedience. So we need to count the cost now. We need to examine this word now. We need to make sure we're ready right now based on this word, not on our feelings or church tradition or denomination or what the world says, but based on what his word says. Galatians 5. First of all, verse 16, he says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The word walk in the Greek is peripateo. It means to tread all around. It means to follow as a disciple. If you will follow, if I will follow the Holy Ghost as a disciple, follow Christ, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The Holy Ghost will not lead you to lust after women or men. The Holy Ghost will not lead you to curse. He will lead drink or smoke. He will lead you to look at pornography. He will lead you to hate. He will lead you not to forgive. The Holy Ghost will lead you to live like Jesus every time. And when you walk in obedience to the Holy Ghost, you say, how do I know I'm led by the Spirit? By being led by the Word of God. Jesus says in John 6, the Spirit and the Word agree. God will not contradict himself. When you and I will walk in obedience to his Word, you can be fully assured you're walking in obedience to the Holy Ghost. Walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That word fulfill means to complete. It means to be a debtor to. Paul said in Romans 8, 13, Now, brethren, ye are not debtors to live after the flesh. But if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. The Holy Ghost will always lead you and lead me to go against the flesh, never to give in to it. Say, how do I know the Holy Ghost lead? He's the one telling you to fast. Amen. He's the one telling you to pray. He's the one telling you to forgive. He's the one telling you to close your mouth and not speak. He's the one telling you to suffer wrong. He's the one telling you to humble yourself. It's the devil saying to rise up and give him a piece of your mind. That's the devil. But the box of strife is a work of the flesh. You hear this now? Verse 17, when the flesh lusts against the spirit. See, the flesh will always be trying to get you and get me not to obey the Holy Ghost. The flesh will be trying to get you to stay out of the presence of God. That flesh will say, you're too tired to read the Bible. 
the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are, are contrary to one to the other, that ye cannot do the things that you would. What you and I desire to do, you and I cannot do. The Christian life is a life of self denial. It's a life of putting self and self-will and self-desire, selfish ambition on the cross with Christ. Christ did not do what he wanted. He did what the Father commanded. All the time. He said in Johnny 29, the the Father hath not, not left me alone, but I always do the things that please him. Hallelujah. That's how we have to live as well. A crucified life, a denied life, a life lived out of love for Jesus, and that love will produce complete obedience. See how? He says, but my grace is sufficient for thee, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, when I am weak, Paul says, I am if you and I will cry out to him, when times are tough, his grace will be there. All you have to do is grab this hand of grace with the hand of faith, Amen. trust and obey. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 18, but if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Works in the Greek is origon, means toil or occupation, employment. Saying the flesh has a job. And what's that job? It's trying to take you and trying to take me down to hell with it. Trying to get us to obey the devil and not obey Jesus. But the Bible says if we're led by the Holy Ghost, we will not fulfill 